Hello and welcome to Paper Plays, Julie Kay. Welcome everyone and thank you so much for stopping by to check out my latest video and to see what I have been up to. And for today's video, I'm sharing with you guys an altered clock that I decorated, kind of in a shabby vintage style. And I have a beautiful little scene on the inside with that bird and some flowers and some little pearl sprays. There's also some lace on the inside. I did chalk paint this. It did start off as silver. I added the beautiful bridal trim with the pearls, little details of pearls. You can see some extra layers of trim that I added. And then I also added a digital image to the back just to give the back a finished look. And then also on the inside, and I will have links listed below in the description box for all the products I use. And this is a tutorial, so if you are interested in seeing how I put together and decorated this clock, stay tuned for the rest of the video. So a while back when I was at the thrift store, I found this clock and it looks like I paid $2.50 for it. And, um, I picked it up because I've always wanted to alter a clock. You know, Tim Holtz has those clocks out there that you can alter. And I just, at the time, I just didn't want to pay the price. So I'm going to see if I can take this apart and if we can alter it and then decorate it. I, my vision, I think, is possibly like shabby chic, some sort of shabby chic vintage type style maybe. Um, adding some flowers or something on the inside, some sort of scene. And so the first step is I'm going to see if I can take it apart or not. If I can't do that, then I guess you guys probably will never see the video. Um, but in case anybody is wondering, this originally was a clock that came from Bath and Body Works. And let's just measure the back is almost five inches, not quite. And then it kind of tapers to the front and the circle there is almost four inches. So it's kind of a tapered clock and it just sits like this. And so it looks like there are some screws on the back side. So I do have this tiny little screwdriver set and I have this little screwdriver right here. I'm gonna see if this will open it up. I think it will. So let's start with that first. So when I do a project like this, I usually make sure I have a baggie or a cup or something that if I take any parts off of it that I might want to be able to use again to put it back together. So like these little screws I'm going to put in the baggie so I don't get lost. So now this is kind of what it looks like on the inside. And so, um, so for sure we need to figure out how to take this front off and all of the wires out. So my first step is it looks like, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that there's kind of a, like a nut and it's holding this in and also this down here there's a nut that's holding the legs in. So I'm going to see and it looks like the legs are going to come right off. I'm kind of screwing them off. And so I think those are going to come right off. So that's what one of the legs looks like. So this is actually coming apart a little easier than I thought it was going to. But hopefully I'll be able to figure out how to put these back in because I don't think I'm going to use this piece. So hopefully it'll still stand on its own. So that'll be something I'll try before I even um, get too far into it just to make sure that this is all going to be able to come together again. So of course these ones are not going to come out as easy. It looks like though that there are some screws up here. So let's try that and see if I can take this apart. So that came out pretty easy. So yeah, now that I have that piece off, this is going to come off easy. Again, it's just kind of the same as what the legs were with the little bolt and little screw thing. So I'll put it kind of back together here. 
Just that way I remember which pieces go together. So we'll stick that in the baggie also. So we'll have to do the same thing. And again, I don't, this is what I'm trying to take out because I need to take this black piece out. So let's take this off. You know, if you were to buy like one of those Tim Holtz ones, you probably wouldn't have to do this type of taking or gutting it apart, taking it apart, gutting it apart. Um, but I like the price on this one better than the Tim Holtz ones, so I was willing to give it a try. So I got that piece out. This actually might make it easier to paint too, to have all these pieces separate. So I'll go ahead and stick those in my little baggie here. So now let's see if this comes apart. So it looks like it is going to come apart. Um, other than this is connected, so I don't... That might be kind of unfortunate if I can't add that back in somehow, but... Um, because this is connected to this, so I don't... So let's see, I could, that screwdriver didn't was too big, so let's see if I can find something else that'll... fit. And so again, I'm just trying to take off this metal piece right here. So what I'm going to do on this one, because I don't know if I'll need these other little pieces or not on this one, so I'm just going to kind of tape them temporarily together. I'm just going to add a little piece of tape or you could do like a washi tape or something um, just to make sure that I know that these pieces go together. So that's going to go in my little baggie also because I want to try and figure out how to put that back on. So now it looks like all of the guts are going to come out. So that was easier than I thought in some ways. And we have the glass piece and this inner piece. So I'll have to decide if I want. So I probably will want to put the glass back in it. And when I put the glass back in at the end, I am probably going to, um, to clean it. So I'm going to put that in the baggie also. And I don't think I need any of these pieces in here. That one metal piece through the top was hooked on this, but I might have to try and figure out a different way to to attach it, but maybe I'll just take this off just in case I need that. I don't know if I will or not. It looks like right now I just have this metal piece right here. And one of the things I wanted to check first before I go any further is to make sure if I put the legs back on that it's gonna stand on its own without that black piece in here. So let's just try and put the legs back on just a curiosity to see if that'll work. So it does look like it's going to stand, which is what I wanted to make sure before I went any further with this. Um, it does look a little dirty up here, so I am going to have to clean it off. I'll wash it. Um, so the only thing I'm thinking, if I want the glass put back on, it's going to be difficult to to decorate it. I was hoping to decorate it from this way in, but if I might not be able to do that because of how the glass is. So 
I'm thinking what I'll have to do is maybe decorate from this side towards the front and then just put this on the back. And so that's going to be interesting to figure out how to glue it in at the end. So I don't think I actually need the ring. Um, Cause that was what was holding the, the plate away from the glass. I should be able to just glue this, the glass in. And I know I can attach all the stuff on the top. So I think I'm going to trace the back side of this and just cut it out so I have a template for the back because I'm not going to be able to to reuse this I don't think on the inside so that's the first thing I think I'm going to do so actually what I'm going to do here and I'm going to do this off camera is I have circle die cuts so I'm going to find one that's slightly bigger than this than this back because I know I'm going to want to glue this at the end on the back side of this um, just to finish off whatever you're going to look at through the thing so I will need to get a bigger circle I am going to so I'll do that off camera but the first thing I'm going to do is because um, I do want to paint this on the outside and the inside and then I'm going to wash it, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to scuff it up a little bit with some sandpaper. I'm using 150 fine sandpaper because that's just going to make it just a little bit easier for, for painting. And I think for now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave the, the legs on while I paint it. I think that'll be easier. So I'm going to go ahead and let's sand scuff it. And the reason why um, I'm going to just scuff it a little bit is it's going to make painting it easier. It'll it'll have something to stick onto it when I when I paint it. Otherwise, if you paint directly on the metal without prepping it somehow. Um, the paint might chip off very easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to sandpaper this and then also I'm gonna go ahead and make a slightly bigger circle that we can glue on at, on the back at the end. So I'll be right back after I'm done um, scuffing this and then I'm also going to wash it real quick in the sink with some Dawn dish soap. So I'll be back after I do all of that. So I just finished sanding and cleaning up my mess and from sanding and I washed it really well with some Dawn dish soap and dried it. And then I also put it back together. I didn't do that on camera, but um, it was pr pretty easy. I just slipped everything back into the spots, at least just for the, the top pieces and this, the legs. And then I do have this piece left, which goes in the middle and then originally it hooked into like the inner compartments which isn't an option and so I was thinking um, I had two different options that I could do one is as I think it would this part of the metal is pretty pretty easy to bend I think so if you take like a pliers and I think it would be very doable if you were doing this yourself on a project and so I think that would be an option if you were kind of crafting along with me making one of these um, so now that I've bent that and I don't know on the inside right there you could hook it inside there and then what I would go ahead and do is I would use some E6000 glue to glue it in and so if you want it to look kind of like how it originally looked I think that's that's an option. But what I was thinking, <clears throat> cause I thought that could be cute and you could put like a little flower or a piece of bling right there. But I've been going through my stash uh, since, um, since I recorded last and just looking at different ideas or different things I could put inside of my clock. And I did come across this piece. I believe it came from Tim Holtz. And it's like a little finial. 
or a drawer pull and you can take out this little screw down here. So what I'm thinking is, is I'm going to actually put this in here. I think once I paint it up, I think that'll be kind of fun to have that in the middle instead. And so I'm going to do that instead of gluing this piece back in. But I just wanted to show you guys if you were crafting along with me or deconstructing and reconstructing the clock, how you could possibly put this piece back in. Like I said, I, you could very easily do that if you wanted to keep the character of the original clock. You could do that. But I, I kind of want to go with this piece now that I found it. So I'm not going to do this. Originally, that's what I had in my head to do. But I wanted to show you guys that. And then I think for decorating on the inside, I'm going to put like a couple of flowers in there. I thought about putting like a bird's nest. And I had a bird's nest, but it was a little too big. And the birds I had that fit in the nest just weren't going to, they were kind of a bright blue color and they just weren't going to work with my theme. So I think I'm just going to stick with flowers for the inside for decorating. And then I also picked out a digital that I had. So these come from my porch print. And I bought like a rose kit or something and they were in there. And I cut out two of them because I wasn't quite sure which size I wanted. They had this little bit bigger size and then this little bit smaller size. And of course there's even smaller ones. And this is the one that I chose. So that'll be my back background inside the clock. I think that's really cute. I also decided not to take out the the arms of the clock I'm just gonna leave it without I just decided I didn't like those other ones I had a bright green on them so I'm just gonna leave this one as my background and then I also went ahead and cut out just a slightly bigger circle than the back and the reason why I wanted to do that is because when I glue this down it'll have at least somewhere to sit nicely and so that should work when I glue it down to the back and it'll give a nice back, flat back to the back side. And then I think I'm also going to like run some, some beads or something around it. And I'm probably going to add laces or trims yet to the outside to after I paint it. So I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of my thinking process. So this should fit on this piece right here. And I am going to go ahead and like paint just the outside edge just in case a little bit of the cardboard shows. And then I also went through my scrap booking papers and I came across um, a partial piece of this paper. And so I went ahead and die cut it because I'm going to put this on the back side so that it has kind of a clean back when it's all said and done. So those are kind of my starting plans that I wanted to show you guys. And so I'm going to paint this. I'm going to paint all of this. And I'll start the painting process with you guys, but I'm not going to do, do all of it on camera because I'm sure you'll get bored watching me paint. But I'm going to go ahead and use this Waverly chalk, plast and it's called Plaster is the Color. It's a matte finish, and it's a, like an acrylic paint, um, but it's kind of a chalk, chalk finish. So I don't know if I'm going to end up doing one or two quote, two coats of the paint. Um, usually I think I have to use two of this one. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to paint the outside and the inside with this. And I have kind of a brush and also these little dabbers on here. I haven't quite decided which I'm going to use. If it seems like my paint strokes are showing up too much with this, then I'll go ahead and just use these with texture on them. And this paint is a little thick, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a little water to it just to water it down just a little bit. That'll make it easier to, to spread on my project. So we'll just start with the paintbrush to see how that works. So like I said, I'm going to paint the inside and the outside just to start with. Before I started painting, I did tighten up all the screws and bolts and everything as tight as I could go. So hopefully they don't ever come loose, but. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish painting the outside and the 
the inside. So I haven't gotten very far into painting since I turned the camera off and I ran into an issue and decided to pop back on after I washed my hands to show you guys what I ended up doing. I was having a difficult time painting underneath the little bells on the clock so I ended up having to take it apart. So I'm thinking that it'll be easier to paint separate and then I'll go ahead and put it back together. And so I'm going to try and be careful to not add any more paint to the treads of the the little bells here so that the nuts and bolts easily go back on again. Um, so um, I, like I said I just wanted to pop back on and show you what issue I had and then I also dug out I have a little old Lazy Susan which you guys these are perfect for painting uh, because you can move move it around to get to the front and the back side without having to pick up things. So I just thought I would also share that little tip with you guys. So I'm going to continue to paint and I'll pop back on and show you the finished results. So I am back from painting and I ended up doing two coats of the chalk paint and then I did a little bit of touch up in a couple spots that needed maybe a third coat. I also added the bell ringer thing on the top. And then once I did that, I did paint over the little bolts that I had to use. I also painted the edges of the circle that I cut out that I'll use. Um, just in case a little bit of that shows, I wanted it to, to have a little bit of ink. And then the next step is I'm going to try and put a little protective coat on this. I just worry that with it being metal that it might chip off a little bit, which, you know, long term it's fine but I'm just gonna protect it a little bit and I'm just gonna go ahead and use matte medium. You could use like a polycrylic or a wax to put over it. And this is a matte medium. Sometimes I use this kind of as a glue for things, but um, it does say it creates a matte non-reflective finish, which is what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, to do that. And then I also wanted to show you too that I'll do this off camera, but I received this wonderful trim from Gisela in a swap that we did. And she is lavish laces on Etsy. But I was thinking for sure that I would like to add this around this part of the clock. But I think I want to do it tea dyed. So I'm going to tea dye this because I want it to be just a little bit darker than the white considering I'm going to use this image on the inside. I just want a little bit of, you know, different varying shades. So I think I'm going to tea dye this and I'll do that off camera and let it dry before I come back and we can glue it on together. But um, I will just start off doing this matte medium and then I'll finish that also off camera. But like I said, it's just kind of a little finish. You can also use this as a glue for like paper collaging instead of like Mod Podge, I use this matte medium often. Um, but I've also used it as a protective finish on like journal covers or, or projects like this. And it does go on kind of opaque, um, which you can't really tell on camera, it looks clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put a quote, a uh, layer of, of this on the whole clock inside and out. And I will be back once it's dried and I have tea dyed my lace. So I did paint on that matte medium on the outside to protect it. And it seems like it's doing a really good job now that it's dried. And I was debating, again, I had this little piece that I thought about putting up here. Um, and I tried it out and I didn't, it just was so big. If I had a little bit smaller one, I think it would be perfect. So I did go ahead also and I painted the little piece and let it dry. So I am going to go ahead and glue this in here. And um, I have some E6000 glue and a little bit of hot glue for that. But then I also wanted to show you what my next steps were. Um, I'll eventually find like a little like flat back pearl or a little gem or a piece of bling or something to put on that. And then I was playing around with, again, on the outside, I know I want to use this trim that I tea dyed from Gisela. 
and it's still drying so I'm gonna let that continue to dry but I was thinking then if I'm gonna wrap that on the outside on the inside I also needed to pick out something and part of me thought about using um, so part of me thought part of me thought about using the little doilies and gluing them down on the inside all the way around as one option. And then I also remembered I had this gorgeous lace that I got from Amy Love in, I think it was a Christmas swap that we did. I got this and I've been hoarding it for a while. And I think this would have been perfect in here, but it's slightly too long. And I thought about cutting off part of it but um, I don't, don't really want to do that either. So I'm going to hoard on to this one a little bit longer from Amy. And I know I'll find the perfect project for that one. And then I remembered that Kim from Angel Dreams Crafts, when she sent me a happy mail package also, she had this beautiful like netting type trim in there and is gorgeous. And what I liked about this one is... Um, it looks a little vintage, but it already looks like it's been tea dyed. And so um, you can kind of see what it looks like on this chalk paint there. But I'm thinking that this would be perfect as kind of my layering piece on the inside of the clock. And I know that it's really tough for you guys to see. But I'll try and hold that up a little bit here just so you can kind of see. And what I'm trying to do is do some of the work without putting the back on yet, um, just so I can have access to it on both sides. But I'll just kind of show you. And I think if I wrap this around all the way on the inside and glue it down, it's gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna go with that one from Kim. And then I also made some decisions um, I have like the glass piece in here that was for the front and part of me thought maybe I could just decorate from behind and then put, um, if I glued the glass piece in and then I could glue this on at the very, at the very end and then this would have a glass piece on it. And I'm trying to debate right now, and I wish, you know, in some ways it's like, oh, it'd be nice to do a live so I could see, you know, you guys could give me your opinions. And I haven't washed this if I am going to use it. But again, this would have to go, you know, I'd have to glue this back into the inside. And I'm thinking I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to leave it open, I think. Um, just because it's going to make my life life easier. I'm still, you know, I'm still going to have this back here. So it's still going to look like a clock. It's just a clock that's missing its glass front. And I just think that'll work better. So I decided to not use the glass front. So I did want to tell you guys about that too. And so what I'm going, and then the other thing I'm going to do too when I shut the camera off is I am going to glue this down. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the matte medium on it because then I can also do the matte medium over the top and kind of protect it. So I'm going to do that too. And then I also debated um, on the back side. I cut out another one of those My Porch Prints clocks. And I think I'm going to glue this one on the back side at the very end also. And just have the back side look like this on the back side. Um, so I'm going to do that off camera. But right now on camera I thought... I'm going to try and attempt to glue this little piece in. So I have my hot glue gun. I have a little bit of E6000. I have a paper towel in case I need it sitting here. And we're going to try and glue this in again. I'm just going to put some glue right here and then hopefully stick it up through here and put it hopefully somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to have to kind of ha already have it in. And so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here and 
Sometimes I like to do a little bit of E6000 glue because for long term the E6000 glue is going to stick, but temporarily the hot glue will help it stick so that it doesn't move. And I know that this is going to be really hard for you guys to see, but I did want you to you to see how how I was going to put this together. So I'll try and hold it up on the camera real fast before I glue it down. So I just put a little bit of glue on it and so now I'm going to just kind of place it where I want it. And I think that's close enough. And so then I'm going to go back in with just a little bit more E6000 glue. Um, like I said, the hot glue is kind of temporarily holding it where I want it. So hopefully you can kind of see that I have some glue on that. And um, it'll also get glued over when I glue this down onto it. So I'm going to let this dry. It's going to need quite a while to dry since I used the E6000 glue. But... Before I pop back on to decorate more with you guys, I will, like I talk, talked about, I'll attach this and I'm also going to go ahead and glue this trim to the inside. And as far as what type of glue I'm going to use, I'm going to use Fabri-Tac to glue this down on the inside. And if I need to use hot glue in a couple spots, I will. So that's going to be my next steps and I will be back when... This is finished drying and I've completed that step. So I did just finish gluing down that lace on the inside. And I apologize for not doing that on camera. I just thought it would be kind of hard to do since it was on the inside and you guys couldn't see what I was doing anyways. And so the, now the next step is, I think what I wanna do is put the back piece on, it's dry. And so I'm going to glue that on and then we can go ahead and decorate the outside and the inside. And again, I'm going to use this beautiful lace on the outside. This is still a little bit wet, so I might not be able to do that um, right away. But um, I could maybe start working on the inside with you guys next while that's still drying. And so part of this I am going to have to probably hold up like this to, to glue it in the exact right spot. So some of this you might not see on camera. And I, what I'm thinking the best option probably to do is to use E6000. And then I'll probably put just a little bit of hot glue again on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just barely put... E6000 glue all around the edge right here. And if you've never worked with E6000 glue, it is really smelly glue, unfortunately, but it does hold really well. So I'm going to just put just a little bit of hot glue in a couple spots where the E6000 glue didn't touch. And so I am going to hold it up because I want to make sure that my 12 is on kind of the right spot here. So I am going to have to hold it up this way. So again, I apologize. Um, I'll start this way, but I'm going to have to fine tune it real fast looking at, directly at it. I just want to make sure that my 12 is for the most part in, in the right spot. And I want to make sure that it's also centered so so I am going to go around and just kind of make sure that it's attached and that there's no excess glue that needs to be taken off anywhere so that's what it looks like I really like that um, so now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and decorate the inside since that lace I want to use on the outside is still drying thinking what I want to do first and this will also help make sure that the back is attached nicely is I do want to take, I have this trim from Hobby Lobby, this pearl trim, and I'm going to glue that around on the very inside, right along here, 
all the way around. And again, um, I'm just going to use hot glue for that. And I'll start off, you know, showing you guys, but I'll do most of it off camera because again, my hands are going to be in here and you're not going to be able to probably see what I'm doing anyways. Um, and so I just put just a little bit of hot glue in there. And so I'll just start winding my way around the inside so you can kind of see how I started that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that. So after attaching the back row of pearls, I also went ahead and attached pearls just right here on the inside. The next step is to go ahead and decorate the inside. And so I do have this little spray that I created. The background pieces, the tool, um, and bead spray came from Hobby Lobby and then this little bead piece I picked up at a thrift store. It was on some other flowers that I took off and then I just kind of wrapped some wire around it and so I'm going to place that in here and then I'm going to add some flowers next. So hopefully I can do this on camera so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. I kind of wanted to glue it kind of somewhat at a little bit of an angle because I still wanted to read the word Paris and I still wanted room underneath it to put flowers down. So I did pick out these parchment flowers from my stash and I got these ones I believe um, from Craft Supplies for You or KS for You. I've had them in my stash for a while. I think I actually had them from when I was on um, Julie's design team way back when but they're nice little flowers and I think they're perfect I kind of wanted a vintage feel and there's just a little hint of pink in these ones so I'm thinking I want to put kind of two off to the side and one in the middle like that and, you know of course they'll be glued down and then I have these fun little appliques that I got from Gisela at Lavish Laces in the swap that we were in. And so I think I want to put them right off to the side here, kind of like this. So right now I just want to kind of lay it out and I'll probably glue these down first, but I just want to lay out kind of where, where everything's going to fit just to make sure it's all going to fit in here nicely. You know, it's kind of, kind of difficult with there's not a lot of real estate on the inside of, of this. And actually I have a third one too that I could put down the middle, so I'm kind of tempted to do that. So I'm kind of hoping that the, the little appliques will work kind of like a, like they look like leaves kind of, beaded leaves. So like that is what I'm thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those down now and then I'll put the flowers in. So hopefully they'll kind of stay in place. So I do have all three of those in. And let's see about the flowers. I'm kind of, on this one I've wrapped around some little like stamen pieces and those come from um, Hobby Lobby also. You find them in the wedding section. I'm getting kind of low on them so I'm hoping that they still have them because I need to pick up a few more of them. Then each one of these are going to go off to the side. So looking in, it looks like there's kind of a little empty spot right there and I still have another one of these flowers. So I'm going to stick that one in right there just to kind of fill in that gap. And then I have a couple more embellishments I'd like to add. So 
basically that's what we have so far. And I'm just going to kind of touch all of the flowers because I want to make sure that they're all glued in pretty, pretty well in here. And then I'm also going to take my little tweezers and I'm just going to rearrange a little bit of the stuff in the back just to make it kind of how I want it to look, I guess. So I was hoping to put I had these little jewel pieces right here that I got from Amy Love here on YouTube and I was hoping to kind of put these in there somewhere too on the back side maybe. And then I wanted to put this little bird that I picked up on top and glue that on top of the flowers. Um, it's really kind of tough to see back there. And then right there was that other one that I just glued in. I really think that looks really nice um, sitting up here. So we're going to add that little bird. And I think that's all I'm going to do on the inside. And then I'm going to go ahead and start decorating the, the outside. And these little birds I found at the thrift store. I bought quite a few of them. It was in a big big bag of them. And I believe that they were once used to like decorate wedding cakes maybe in the 80s. The 1980s. And I had found a good deal like I said at a thrift store on them. And I use them every once in a while on projects. So that's what the inside looks like. I'm really happy with that. I'm don't think I could have done it any better than that. So really happy with that. And so next, I do want to take this beautiful lace too that I got from, it's like a wedding lace that I got from Lavish Laces or from Gisela in a swap. And I want to glue this, I'm trying to decide where, I think I want it right here because I can still glue maybe a row of beads around right here. So I think that's what I want to do with this one. In case anybody's wondering, I like to use the Fabri-Tac over the hot glue whenever I get a chance. I just think long term, um, sometimes the Fabri-Tac holds better. And then it also doesn't do a lot of like the seepage like through pretty laces like this when you use the hot glue. So. Um, whenever I think that the fabri is going to hold, I usually use the fabri over the hot glue. So here's what we have so far. I think that's really cute. I like that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue beads around the back side. Now that's what it looks like so far with all the beads glued on. Next I'm going to glue down some flat back pearls into the centers. So that's what we have so far. I really like that. I'm not quite sure where I got this piece from. I've had it in my, I have a few of these. I have them in my, I've had them in my stash for quite a while. Yeah, I like that with the pearls there and then I have the pearls peeking out right there and of course all the pearls in other spots along here too. So I think that'll work good. So yeah, I like that. That works really nice. So what else can I do? I wonder what it would look like if I put pearls around this part. Yeah, I think I have to do that. That's really cute. 
So we'll start them in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side now. So I'm going to go ahead and cover up the two screws. For right now on these, I just used the hot glue, but if they don't stay, I'll go back in with the E6000 and glue them down. We'll just see if they stay or not long term. Okay, this is really, really cute. I'm really happy with this. So I don't know if I wanna, I think that's a little bit much, but I'm trying to debate. Um, I did wash the glass and I think I could glue it on the outside and then possibly put a ring of pearls around there. So I'm kind of tempted to do that. So I think what I'm going to do is just make sure I have all my little glue strings cleaned up on the inside because once it's closed, it's closed. And for the mirror, and I'm going to use the e, or the glass, not mirror, but I'm going to use E6000 for that. So I'm going to have to let it dry. But yeah, I really like how this turned out. This is so cute. I'm just kind of peeking one last time to make sure I got all the glue strings out that, you know, nothing's moving in there. So I guess I'm not really worried about being able to see the glue if I put the flat back pearls or the other string of pearls over it, it should cover it up. In theory, we'll find out. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the glass dry and then I'll come back and we'll finish decorating it up together once it's dry. The glass has finished drying on top of my little clock. It's not falling off, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish decorating. Um, I will show you guys up close. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it looks like I had a little bit of that E6000 glue drip right there, so I'm gonna have to find something to cover that up. And so I found these ribbon roses in my stash, so I think that that'll look cute up there just to kind of cover that up. But I am going to glue down um, some trim around here and I thought about using the flat back pearls that I had been using but then when I was looking through my stash at trims I found this little bead trim and this came off of a wedding dress from a long time ago. So I'm thinking I'm going to, to wrap that around and glue it down because that will hide the glue that you see behind the glass. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a trim on this side also. So, um, and I think I'm gonna try Fabri-Tac instead of the hot glue. It does say it bonds fabric, lace, glass, leather, wood, and trims. So I'm gonna try the Fabri-Tac um, to glue onto the glass and we'll just see how, see how that works. And just temporarily, I'm gonna stick this where I want it just so it kinda hides that little spot that I was talking about. And I think I still like the, the look of that. So um, I just kind of want to leave a spot for, for gluing that down when I'm done. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing down the trim. I'm not quite sure if it's best to add the glue on the glass or on the trim. I think I'm just going to put it on to the trim. So 
So I just finished gluing down that trim and it's still drying. And I just wanted to give you guys a peek at what that looks like. So now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the flowers up here. And this one did have like kind of a sticker on the back side, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the, the sticker part off. And I think to glue this down, I think I'm gonna use hot glue. And so that's what, what it looks like now. I really like how this is turning out. I'm really, really, really happy with it. So now I think I have a couple of options for gluing. I could glue pearls around the side, or I also have um, this bead, this not bead, but braid trim, this old, it's a vintage braid trim. And so I'm thinking that that would look nice glued around the side. And that just kind of finishes up the, the look on the side. So I think I'm going to do that next. And I'm going to go ahead and try um, to use the Fabri-Tac again. So that's what the finished trim looks like. And again, I just was adding that just to kind of cover the glass on the side, just to give it a nice finished look. And I do have to say, I really love how this is turning out. And th the last thing I want to do is I want to add just something on the back side. I could just paint it um, and just leave it with a chalk paint on the back. But um, I did originally cut this circle out to put back there. But I went ahead and I cut out another one of those My Porch Prince images of the clock. And I'm just going to put that on the back side just to give it a finished look on the back. You don't have to do this, but I always just like to have things when I can. I like to give them a nice finished look on the back side. And for this one, I'm also going to go ahead and use the matte medium to glue it down. I did already put a layer of the matte medium over the top, so it has a little bit of a protective layer over the top. So that is the back side, and I'm going to let that dry, and then once it's firmly attached, I will go back over it again with the matte medium in a couple of minutes, but I'll do that off camera. But for now, I'm going to call this finished. And I do have to say, I really love how this turned out. I don't know what you guys think, but it's gorgeous. And unfortunately, I'm having a hard time angling it so you guys can kind of see the inside without the glare from my overhead lights. But um, I do want to show a couple of different views. You know, you can see the beautiful lace on the inside, the little scene that we created. And then the sides with all the little layers of bead trims, this beautiful bridal lace. So thank you everybody so much for watching today. Hopefully you enjoyed this little tutorial of how I put together my altered clock. And until next time, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and happy crafting.